Okay, Hell of a Boss Episode 3, and by the looks of it, uh, we're about to have another little tonal whiplash here from sort of heartbreakingly sincere daddy-daughter drama in the previous one to uh, horniness, I guess? There's... They 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 got they they gone do a sex on screen is what that's going what's gonna happen because of all of the pink and the hearts and the succubus ass looking character over there and I guess these two look a little bit like they're in post coital bliss I don't know what's going on there um hell if I know uh but I'm curious anyway uh no spoilers in the comments please like I you can foreshadow things obliquely if if you want to but don't tell me what's going to happen and when it's going to happen and who it's going to happen to i want to find that stuff out for myself um and also a few people were asking what the copyright status is they are all getting copyright claimed these episodes which is to say that the episodes are getting identified as this contains the full episode of hell of a boss from the bfc pop youtube channel and they're getting blocked from me monetizing them. I don't know if they're being monetized in like for the Vivsi Pop channel. That might be happening. I can't actually check that. Um, if someone could turn off their ad blocker and play this video just quickly and let me know whether you're getting ads on it, that would be nice to know. Um, because it's a little I don't mind not running ads on these videos and not getting any ad revenue because like I am playing the full fucking thing on screen so that's like that's reasonably fair enough if they if they would prefer i don't monetize that i don't i am huh. i'm not 100 percent sure how i feel about someone else putting ads on my videos and i can't control how many of them there are or where they go uh that's a little bit more iffy for me uh so let, let me know if you like are there pre-roll ads mid-roll ads what's what's going on what's what's the deal there uh i i would appreciate some some information from you guys but uh, Hello Boss Episode 3. I guess, I guess it's about to get horny. The following cartoon contains graphic novels. Horny demons, very horny humans. Okay, yes. So it's about to get horny. Okay. Some very personable animation on Blitzo there. But what I'm interested in is the car animation. Okay, so what we do. Oh, okay, right. Because, like, cars, as I've. The thing I've covered before, as technical objects, when you try to fucking animate them, they can be a real pain in the fucking ass, right? They can, they can be real. Buck you, Flitzo. Oh, he has so many friends. Um. They can be a real pain in the ass to animate. So what we're doing here seems to be like we're drawing the minimum number of frames needed to do a sort of swinging back and forth. Right, and then we're kicking the ass out here. Still an impressive piece of animation, this. Like, huh, a little bit of a clipping error there. You can see how the fence is clipping up over the, over the car itself. A little bit of a mess up with the layering, I guess. Um... That doesn't matter. It's just a small thing. And then, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I 100% buy that swerve. This one that comes like, like where, like we get the swerve of like he's drifting into the swing into the thing. Then he swerves over here, and then like it takes a real hard like swoop swoop like with the front of the car, the way that it like it's just the back that's kicking out. I don't know if I hundred percent buy that, but like it works well enough to convey the erratic nature of the driving. Ooh, nice little turn on the wheels there too. I like the detail of like the the hood of the car swinging up, and then we have this thing where it's like we have like what one, two, three, four unique frames of animation for that one, which is about all you need. <laughs> ah, that's nicely expressive. I like that. Oh, shit. Ferocica. 
Litso. I should have known you'd be here. I could smell fish for miles, which is odd because I believe the nearest ocean is three rooms <laughs> down. <laughs> okay. That that's a good visual gag. I like that. I like <laughs> I like that. Litso. I should have known you'd be here. I could smell fish for miles, which is odd because I believe the nearest ocean is <laughs> That's good. I like that. That that that's that's a that's a joke with a timing that lands because like it's he's going off on a rant to insult her, then he falls over flat on his stupid face like a moron, and then he gets up like it doesn't matter. Like like it's 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 a little double joke where it's like both it subverts the expectation by interrupting him with something stupid in the middle of what he's saying, and then it interrupts the interruption by pretending it didn't happen completely smoothly. I quite like that. That's quite nice. Things down. And I should have known you'd be here when I heard the Amber alerts. Oh yeah? I'm surprised they let your fat ass out of rehab. I can see you're still a drunken whore, clutching onto that Bielsa juice bottle like it's the last cock in hell. They let me out because I'm still famous, and rehab is for sad loser wash-ups. So your sister says hi. Did she fuck his sister? Is that what the <laughs> is that what they're implying here? Why are you parking here? This is the only parking spot my company has. So take your tampon race car somewhere else. Actually, prick, it has my name on it. I'm doing a bit of freelance for one of the infinitely more successful companies in the building. No way. And they wanted way. to have me come in this week to lead their team during spring break. A week? No, no, you are not parking here for a fucking week. Aw, you mad blitzo? You gonna run off, leaving someone else to pay for the hotel room, steal their car, and, and run, run three, three rings to rap, and max my credit, credit cards card on, on shitty, shitty horse riding, riding lessons? lessons? God damn it, whore, you will not let that go. Choke on a sandpaper cock. Nice little detail of him stomping his foot and getting the... the horse... <laughs> okay, so Luna seems to know who this is. I like the expressiveness on her here. Like, there's a certain animal nature to it, like a cat or a dog that's, like, hiding just out of sight. Staring at something they're fascinated at. By the way, those little... those little butthole stars, you got pure Powerpuff Girls. That is pure Craig McCracken. Like that's pure Powerpuff Girls as a design element. By kind of a kind of a lot about Verasica here. There's a lot of Craig McCracken in her in general. Like the 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 way that the fur collar or the fur coat thing is handled, and like the curves, the way that they fall. There's a lot of Powerpuff Girls in there. Like of course, there's a lot of Powerpuff Girls in the whole show, but especially in this. In this character design, I feel like I'm seeing more of it than in than usual. It's a very well composed design too. Like I like the, like because like like um, sort of the the Vipsy Pop design style is very busy as a default, right? Like it tends to have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of lot of like detailing and shit. I like the sort of graphic starkness of like the black and white with like the stars and the crosses and the circles. Um, and then just like that. Sharpie, like, that's a very graphically satisfying character design, this, I think. Choke on a sandpaper cock. Hold on! You better move that pussy wagon right now, or I'm gonna... You'll what? Or I'll, uh... Balto? I'll, I'll call HR. <laughs> Mao, Balto went to the gym, holy shit. <laughs> no, but that's like, I'm... Hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I'm not wrong about this, right? Well, maybe a little bit, but not that much. Like th that's very similar to how And I mean, obviously that's this like derives from the Disney style and all that, but Right? Like that's a similar style of approach to like muscle design and like Yeah, I mean it's like sort of generic '90s American TV, uh, TV and movie animation. I know, but I feel like the construction of him, like especially relative to the way Luna is put together, who seems a little bit more sharper and more graphic, um, 
he has a lot of that sort of 90s era. Yeah, maybe a bit of, maybe a, well, not really. No, there's not really Don Bluth in there, is there? There isn't really much Don Bluth anywhere in the show, is there? Like, not really. That's interesting, actually. Because, like, Don Bluth is one of the other, like, real big, um, like, sort of millennial animation inspiration sources. Um, and Bluth did a whole bunch of furry characters as well. But come to think of it, I don't think I've seen much animation, uh, much inspiration or, like, influence from Bluth's particular oeuvre. Like, there's Disney in there. Um, lots of Invader Sim and Cartoon Network and, like, um, like sort of the... the, the super flat graphic style of, like, the 2000s, but interestingly, not a lot of Don Bluth. I'm seeing some Balto here and some Corvu from um, Lion King 2. Um, but, huh. Okay. Anyway, me, my new hellhound, Vortex. Unlike Vortex? You, he actually does his job well. Oh, that was, that was a floaty little walk cycle. <laughs> Again, well. um... So for that shot, presumably, like, the objective is we want to get him off screen more or less at the same time as she goes off screen. So when he starts walking, you, he, actually does he sort of kicks into motion and then just kind of floats zoop, <laughs> while, do while doing a walk cycle. That's fine, by the way. That's not, that's not really a criticism. It's just something I noticed. Uh, I'll call HR. <laughs> anyway, me, my new hellhound, Vortex. Also, my new hellhound. That language sort of implies that a hellhound is not, like... My, either it implies that a hellhound is a special class of something or other. Like, I, this is my new security guard. This is my new chef. This is my new, you know, assistant. This is my new hellhound. Like, a hellhound is a specific role that someone can fulfill. Or that a hellhound is a specific kind of object that one can own. Which, huh. Unlike you, he actually does his job well. Because that little line implies that Blitzo used to be her hellhound. Or, I guess, her bodyguard? Assistant? Something like that? Ta-ta, Foxstein. Ugh, I wasted so much time with a bag of holes like that. You know Verasica Mayday? Huh? Oh, yeah, I heard. Yeah, we dated. Was it before or after she became a pop star? You dated a pop star! Okay, why are you all acting like that's such a shock? Hello, it's Verasica Mayday. It's yeah, like, it seems to be an unusual... Like, between this and, like, the the noble super demon, whatever the fuck Stolas is, Blitzo does seem to have game, doesn't he? It's you? I just... Is she blind? <laughs> nice expression. Suffering some form of brain damage. Okay, look, you are all making this into a way bigger deal than it needs to be. I don't pry into your stupid personal lives. You do that all totally kinds of time, yeah. sir. What was sex with her like? Billy! What? It's a pop star. You'd want to know what sex with Michael Crawford was like. Touche. Okay, look, let's... <laughs> <laughs> fucking theater kid ass with the little fucking... You do that you totally all kinds do of that. Times, sir. What was sex with her like? Billy! What? It's a pop star. You'd want to know what sex with Michael Crawford was like. <laughs> does, does... Does he play Phantom of the Opera during sex? Like, is that what he does? In sleep he sang to me. <laughs> Sing my angel of music. Ah! <laughs> okay. Touche. Okay, look, let's just drop it. Millie, find a temporary spot for that truck. Okay, Looney, Moxie, let's go here. Mario noise. Shit. Do you think they saw me? Fuck, I did my makeup shitty today. Oh, you look perfect, Looney. Like always. Blitzo has so much fondness for Luna, and Luna does not get, like, does not like him at all. Why? What's the deal there? Because she's a hellhound too, right? So... Interesting we get to see a little bit of, like, social insecurity from Luna there, who's, like, 
mostly has just been kind of aggressive and and I don't give a shit. Fuck, I did my makeup shitty today. Oh, you look perfect, Looney. Like always. Shut up, Dad. Oh, Dad? Oh, is that what? Looney, like always. Shut up, Dad. Oh, <laughs> well, well. So, like, okay, like, as I knew Blitzo had adopted her, I think I remember that from somewhere. Oh, God, my fucking ADHD is shredding my memory. Um, I knew that, but okay, so it's like literally he is her dad. So that. Well, okay, so then, like, Blitzo and Stolas is like toxic dad, Yahweh. Cool. Oh, hang on. Oh, that's just a compact. But what does it say on the compact? Strong, but... Sensitive. Ah, I see. Oh. Whoa. Hi, big man. Where's your bitch bag of an employer? She's in her office. There wasn't room on the sucking floor, so they rented one here on this one. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> Sorry, man. Oh, no, you don't, bitch. Sir, how about you let me go in and try to reason with her? I don't really listen to what's classified as pop genre. <laughs> oh, you do not, do you? You don't think listen to the, the Larry forms of art that the nerd is pop. Oh, you don't, do you? Oh, I like that. I like that he's that kind of nerd. <laughs> he's that kind of insufferable little shit. Music. So her status to me is name Foxy, shut the fuck up. Alrighty then. Hello, Miss Verasica, was it? I work for Imp, and it is actually rather important for us to retain the singular parking space we were assigned because... Aw, look at the little one. He's got a little bow tie. Please don't condescend me, ma'am. I... Wanna kiss you, little guy? No. Oh. oh, no. offer, but I'm married. Hey, why don't you send a little message from me back to your limp dick boss? Foxy, don't let her access any of your hole. I, I gotta go lie down now. Oh, so they are sucked you by, huh? Also, yeah, that, uh, that, that was assault. <laughs> Just, like, I know it's played for comedy, like, but still, you know. Like, no means no, guys. This won't stand! <laughs> All right! That's it! If you're gonna be shitty to my employees, then I challenge you to a fucking challenge. Fuck, I said that twice. Mmm. Is this imp boy starting a demon duel? I think he is. What's the game then, Blitzo? Every year, you STD spreaders go up topside for easy pickings, while spring break is a prime time for crime of all kinds. So I bet you suck, you bitches, can't fuck as many people as we can off by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're serious. Game on, bitch. All right, shut your assholes. Here's how we're gonna- Ah, we're back in the office, are we? Potential horse names. Oh, because he there's a running background gag that he has a thing about riding horse. Okay, I see. Uh What about the last one? I want to see the character design of the last one. Oh, there they are. Nice crop top, very gay. Uh, or, well, slutty at the very least. Which is a slightly different thing. I don't like her as much without the fur coat. I think, like, I think the fur coat, because the rest of the design is so sharp and so, like... <laughs> Like, so many edges, so many points, so many everything. I'm kind of missing the fur coat to give her that softness. Which, like, also, like, in terms of, like, when you're creating a character design, 
when a character is this fucking sharp all over, I think that sort of that sort of pushes against like seductiveness, sensuality, sexuality. I think having softness, having curves supports that sort of succubus seduction idea more. And I do think, like, the angularity of these character designs here, it sort of undercuts a little bit. I mean, again, it depends on how sexy we're really supposed to find them as the audience, right? But I do think the angularity here undercuts the... Or at least it's missing a contrasting element of, like, softness, smoothness, roundness in the shape language. At least looking at them sort of all lined up like that. Huh. Okay. You're serious. Game on, bitch. All right, shut your assholes. Here's how we're going to do this shit. Huh, okay. Interesting structure so far. First, we find a fuck ton of clients. We portal up. We have our fun murder time as per usual. We pile all the bodies into a big fucking canoe. We push said canoe into some water. We light it on fire to attract the sharks and eagles and shit. Maybe a goose too. Fuck it. They come and eat the bodies. We win the bet. We rub it in that sloppy bitch's drunken whore ass face. Do you have any questions? Uh, yeah. Why was that nonsense? That wasn't a question. That wasn't a plan. I'm sorry, but that was a flawless presentation of what we should do, Mox. It's not my fault you got a smooth little brain upstairs. A what now? I'm calling you slow, Moxie. God, why don't you learn to take criticism, you talentless baby dick troll? Well, why don't you take an art class? Why don't you see how expensive they are? Hey, is there a way I can come with you guys this time? Absolutely not. I forbid it. Not gonna happen. Sorry, sweetie. Spring break is no place for young, vulnerable goth girls. You know the kind of freaks up there who drool all over you. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. I mean, they know. They know. Like, even in episode three, they know, I guess. Uh, not, not as a surprise. Like, nice little fourth wall break. Fine. I'll take it. I'll take it. But we are... I do, f I do find... This feels a lot like we're a little bit back to the structure of the pilot. Um, in terms of, like, we have this this office scene of, of Blitzo has a stupid plan. Moxie argues with him over it. They throw a bunch of, like, rapid-fire insults back and forth. No cutaway gags yet, which is good, because, uh, boy, how do we don't need more of those. Um, <laughs> that's... Stairs. That's a good. That's a good. The office gag. That's a good stare straight at camera gag. Um. <laughs> uh, that's well executed. I'll admit. Hey, is there a way I can come with you guys this time? I like the lip flaps on Luna. Oh. Oh, hey. Tiny little animation inconsistency in the nose there. Or is that because they... No, that's not... Because it's not anywhere else in those lift flaps. Okay. Um. Absolutely not. I forbid it. Not gonna happen. Sorry, sweetie. Spring break is no place for young, vulnerable goth girls. You know the kind of freaks up there who drool all over you. <laughs> well, I can blend in with humans easy enough. Just let me tag along. Wait. Say that again. I can blend in. Do you have a human disguise? Yeah, don't you? You three have been screwing around on Earth this whole fucking time. Also, again, when when Luna gets mad, the little bumps, the little ridges in again, that feels very much like there's a furry on the team. Like it feels very much like there's someone on the or m many people perhaps, like maybe the whole fucking team is made up of, of, of furries. It feels like there's people on the team who've like sort of habitually made a study of how to stylize this specific kind of like ana uh, I keep thinking animatronic anthropomorphic um movement and animation like especially in the way that her mouth is animated have been screwing around on earth this whole fucking time without human disguises okay new plan Mooney can help lure the humans to us, and we'll take care of the rest. Okay, how about that? Flawless logic. I think you're missing the biggest issue, sir. Isn't it crucial to have a client who demands enough kills to win this bet? We aren't just going up to massacre. I got that covered, Mox. 
Now we wait. Sir, there is no way we are going to get I'm sorry, yes there is. by the end of the day with one poorly spelled bad grammar flyer. <laughs> it's the SpongeBob gag, Moxie. You must have seen SpongeBob. <laughs> Oh, we are- this is total drama, Ireland. Holy shit. This is clone high. God damn. Now remember, we can't be seen, all right? And loose shots will likely cause a panic, so Luna can help with leading targets to a better spot to off them. You got the list, Looney. <laughs> got it. Oh, Looney, look at you. You look- Downright awful. I am so proud. Now bitch! <laughs> she has hitman vision. I like that. Oh nice. We're getting a montage. I'd like to see that Willy snatch orgasm that many. All right, free breakers. Y'all ready to get fucked up and make some bitches bad choices? Oh, yeah! This is your final boarding call. All aboard. Oh, she's like a fucking pop star on. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, very nice. Uh, she's a pop star on Earth, is she? So this is a weird thing to notice. But that dude's nose. Like. The way it's animated, like, as he. Swings around. Again, talking about, like, like stylistic inspirations, like, that kind of. Chunky three-dimensional nose, that almost gives me slightly bent this in ear vibes. That's slightly, it does a little bit asterisk, almost. Sort of in sharp contrast to the aesthetic of the rest of the crowd. This is your final boarding call. All aboard. Oh, Yeah, got, okay, this is, mm. God damn it! That bitch started her goatish mating call. Now she's gonna win all these sex maniacs. We gotta pick things up, guys. See you on the list, Looney? Huh? Yeah, I, I think so. Good! Oh, whoa, what are you? A leprechaun? <laughs> yeah, pretty cool, huh? But you sure shit ain't gonna tell nobody. All right, next one, Looney, come on. Looney, think we're... What? What? Spring break time, baby! Look! <laughs> Yeah. Twilight, motherfucker. Ooh, is that bad? That's bad. Hey, you? Oh, hey. You're the hound working for my boss's freaky ex. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if that's weird. It's cool. Her beef ain't mine. I'm not paid enough to care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice expression. So is there... Mm, hmm. No, probably not, but we'll see. I'm Luna. <laughs> okay. Hey, Vertex! <laughs> That's hot. I mean, like, literally, you know, because Vortex is... You know, they give off heat. Probably. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> They're... They're, they're doing a good job with the awkward teen thing. 
I guess. But my friends call me Tex. Oh yeah? I wish I had friends. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, I don't, I, 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 I don't have friends. Am I interrupting something? Nah, man, just having a conversation. Conversation leads to HPV. <laughs> and we've lost him. <laughs> I am a little upset at myself at how charming I'm finding Blitz. Like, the... There's a very specific balance that that kind of character has to walk between being funny and being fucking insufferable. He is fucking insufferable a lot of the time. Like, I, especially the start of the episode, like, him just, like, ranting and raving and calling, like, his ex-girlfriend, like, any number of misogynists, like... It's like, eh, it's, like, it's a little, it's over the top, it's a little too much, but like, <laughs> a line like, conversation leads to HPV, is, uh, ah, <laughs> uh, shit, I am a child, like, I am a child of those Newgrounds cartoons myself, after all, I'm a child of those Cartoon Network cartoons, like, this is pitched very directly at my age group in a lot of ways. It's looking like it's up to us to handle this list. Hell yeah! Team m and m getting shit done, making the money! Let's get the fuck out of here! You're gonna get us all into shit! I just wanted to see what was so important that you'd be distracted from your job. What? I can't have a break? We have a parking spot on the line! Hey dude, why don't you chill out? Why don't you stay out of it? Hey, this is our business. Literally. Oh, fuck, Blitz! Why can't you stay out of my face for like five minutes? Because I adopted you. And that should mean something. Oh, what does it matter? You're not my real dad. I was almost 18. It still counts. Well, it shouldn't. I didn't need you then, asshole. I don't now. Okay. Mm. Feel like... Are those top surgery scars? That's cool. Um, I feel like... Like, this confrontation between Luna and Blitz... Clearly is designed... Like, it sort of follows in the, in the vein of episode two, which was, like, very much also about fathers and daughters, right? Um does feel like it needed like just one more episode of setup of blitz like getting in the way of of luna having some kind of a social life outside of him dragging her around all the time um but okay like sure i'll, I'll roll with it i mean they're not necessarily top surgeries like because if you have a little bit of body fat on you you will get those like red lines under your tits but be cool if they were, though. Ugh. Oh my god, it's a fucking possum! Oh crumb! I got it! Oh, is Moxie about to get real drunk? Oh no. That's gonna be fun. Uh, let's Enjoy your break, Looney. I'm gonna go kill something. Uh. Damn, girl, that was savage. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. He'll get over it. He always does. <laughs> I'm glad you can stick up for yourself at least. Mm. Takes guts. Thanks. Oh, he's an affectionate drunk. Also a useless one, but you know. Oh! Yeah. Well, thank God none of those people have cell phones.
Okay, so I'm sort of trying to parse the structure of the thing here, which is Marasatras, the pop star ladies, succubus, throw the bottle of the thing in the ocean. What was that thing? It was Blitzo named it at the start of the. Beelzejuice bottle, like it's the last. Beelzejuice. And Beelzejuice, I guess, makes... Uh, b mortals shouldn't have that, I suppose, is the idea here. So, she behaved... Because, like, in, in the normal s uh, scope of, like, if this was, like, an actual Cartoon Network cartoon, this would be a, an episode about responsibility, right? Like, oh, you should be responsible and drink responsibly. Like, but that doesn't really feel like the vibe of Hell of a Boss, right? So I'm mostly just trying to figure out what the fuck the the kaiju monster showing up, how that relates to the structure of the theme that the episode is trying to get across. I'm not seeing it yet. I guess we'll see by the end. I do like seeing Millie be vicious. Ooh. I like those glow effects. Like the teeth here? Like with like, you have this like, this graphic stylized flat color surface thing with like the glow in the dark. Like you can see that subtle blue glow around the whole thing. And then, oh, oh, that's pretty. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, like those fucking neon glow effects on that shit? That is handsome. <laughs> That's quite good as well. <laughs> High five. <laughs> She totally pegs you, doesn't she? Lucky bastard. Okay, the hellfish counts as two at least, right? Oh, yeah! Way to show off, Mills! Is Max okay? Oh, yeah. He's fine. <laughs> this is funny. I'm so drinking. <laughs> okay, this is too wholesome for my liking. Blitzo. Oh, perfect! That must be the whores. That was handled rather obvious, don't you think? I don't think this belonged to any of us. Would be a shame if anyone found out you guys were behind a giant monster fish in the human world. <laughs> oh, Satan! <laughs> You've all been so fucked! <laughs> yeah, well, you three nasty ass gremlins will be in shit for not being in disguises. A human <laughs> called me a possum. I am not a possum! You know, we could keep this little B-movie scene on the down low if you agree to let us use that parking space. Fine. We fucking won! Ha 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 ha! Fuck yeah! In your face, bitch! Come on, let's get out of here. Tex! Okay, so it's basically yeah. just, uh... Get out of jail free. Oh, hang on. Is the, oh, oh wait a minute. Hang on, that's interesting. Because oh yeah, I heard. Didn't mean to full screen that there. You see the way Luna stands, right? Like because of the digitigrade legs and like the dog anatomy and the thing that's going on. There's a couple of different ways you can handle it in terms of animation, and in terms of like how characters stand when they're doing it. But the way that they handle it with her, at least in 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 the shots that I feel like I remember seeing, is that she tends to stand. 
functionally with her crotch open. Um, can we get... Yeah, like that, like with... With her feet pointed outwards. So is that like is the like the fact that she has this slightly awkward stance like would that then be like that's her dog anatomy cutting through her human disguise because that's clearly what they're doing with the feet is like the the shoes are shaped that way to imitate like the shape of her paws because that would be a that would be a very cool little attention to detail like that just the dog anatomy thing has her like turning outwards like that. I'd quite like that. That would be very cool. Uh, yeah! In your face, bitch! Come on, let's get out of here. Tex! Well, guess it's time to bounce. But hey, if you're ever down to party, I'll give you a ring sometime. Really? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, my girlfriend throws a ton of crazy hound parties. Ding dong! Nice. <laughs> Can't wait for my first one. <laughs> <laughs> let's get you some friends, girl. Still, I like Tex. Like, let's get you some friends, girl. That's... Yeah, she could probably do with it. Let's go back and park our fat fucking car in our fat fucking space. <laughs> Put your hands up, you sick deviants! All right, sluts, get ready to suck a lot of pig dick. Hey, pig dick. Like, a cap. Um. Sluts, wait, does that include Tex? Oh, poor guy. Dick. Okay, so the function of the sea monster is basically to act as a resolution to the core conflict without actually allowing them to win on merit um <laughs> and that makes sense like with the tone of the thing and to be a set piece and i guess that makes sense it is a good one i quite like millie just taking this thing the fuck out and like that that sea monster i will also say it has some great fucking frames like that there is like a with the the with the underlighting and like I like that. Okay, so we're taking the stakes down a little bit from like the emotional drama of the previous episode, which, you know, probably a good call. And I guess we're just kind of doing a joke a minute kind of thing. With I guess the world building detail that Blitz has game for days, some fucking how. <laughs> I do wish Millie got to be a little bit more of a character, though. Like, so far, I just haven't seen her personality much. Like, especially relative to Blitz, but, like, everything relative to Blitz is understated. Um, but even Moxie, like, I feel like Millie sort of, so far, I don't have much from her other than she really fucking loves that little nerd. Which, like, she's, she's, a, she's a husband wife. Like, she's a husband girl, uh, and he's a wife guy. So they go well together. I just wish I had more of a sense of, like, who she is independent of that. But I guess this was Luna's episode, really. And she also didn't have much of a personality before that. So it's nice that, like, makes sense that we have, like, an episode of, like, sort of establishing her difficulty with her dad. <laughs> um, the fact that she's clearly fucking horny. Which, you know, fair enough. That's a, that's a nice rack on that man. Um... But also that, like, probably the thing she needs more than more than to get laid is to have a boyfriend. Uh, or that to have a friend. The thing that she needs more than a boyfriend is to have a friend, right? Which it seems like Tex sort of accurately diagnoses in her is like, uh, it's like, girl needs to socialize with someone who isn't her dad. Um, which, yeah, frankly. <laughs> I do like. <laughs> quite good. That's quite good. 
Yeah, okay, fair enough. That was fun. That was a fun episode. Less to think about, I'd say, than uh, than the previous one, but... But then, like, here, we don't have an apocalyptic lullaby for this one, so... You know. Okay. Yeah, no shit. This, this show is working on me. Like, the, the whiplash from going from soft family dad trying to connect with his, like, his, 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 like, alienated daughter after clearly being a neglectful parent for a while because he, his fucking marriage is falling apart and he's not handling it well, to have a murder and sex competition during spring ba break with some succubuses, fight a giant sea monster, and also Luna uh, wants to fuck a guy. It's like tonal whiplash a little bit, but in a way that I like, I, I enjoy the tonal whiplash of this. I like that it's swinging back and forth like that. And genuinely, like I was wondering, like, what the fuck's the point of the sea monster? Like, what, what's its function in the episode? And it really is just to provide a resolution to the conflict and be a set piece. And there is like some, like you look at the fucking water animation as it like rises here, right? Like that's... And the use of glow, and just the colors here, like the 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 blue sort of electric deep sea glow of the sea monster against like the the like the deep pink sunset of like this fucking sailor moon ass ocean is like genuinely really pretty. Like whoever the fuck the colorist and the and the and the visual effects people were on this episode, my sincerest compliments. Because just the palette that they're working on, like, and the way that, like, the, the background is used to frame. It's, like, genuinely real pretty. Another good little joke that that guy survives and then <laughs> Blitz shoots him. For good reason. He totally pegs you, doesn't she? That woman. Nice little detail with the tail forming the heart. Like, there is, I will say, there is genuinely... There's a lot just to look at if you go looking for it. Like, much in the same way, like, with the fucking robot in the previous episode. Just the animation on that fucking robot was a set piece in and of itself. And this fucking fish battle... That was like a fucking showcase. Like that, some animators had some fucking fun with that. Yeah, I'm I'm enjoying myself quite a bit here. I really am. <laughs> I've already heard, and again, please do not post spoilers. I've already heard in the comments a little bit from the, because as I'm recording this, the first episode reaction, or the pilot episode reaction, has gone live, and people in the comments have already been sort of talking about, oh, season two shits the bed. Season two, everything goes to bed. Like, oh, season two, like, mishandles everything. And that just makes me interested, right? Because, like, oh, does it mishandle everything on a narrative level while upping the production quality, perhaps? Or is the production quality also going to shit the bed? Because either way, I'm going to have something to talk about. Anyway, like, there was a thing I was wondering about Luna, like, with the human form is when you have a character who, like, can put on a disguise to transform herself, right? Like, that's the... By the way, and more gorgeous effects work on these things. Like, you can see the, we have, like... It looks like we have... Like, the flames themselves are made of 2D animated flickering... Yeah, 2D animated flickering... Flame bits. Then there's a whole bunch of digital effects over cropped on top, or like overlaid on top of that, and then more flame effects sort of overlaid inside. Like and it's just a fuck ton of layers of shit, and it almost has a kind of Sailor Moon vibe. That transformation. All right, and loose shots will likely cause a panic, so Luna can help with leading targets to a better spot to off them. You got the list, Looney. <laughs> got it. <sighs> Oh. 
So the thing I was wondering about the disguise is because like when you have a character who's like able to inhabit multiple forms and like one of them is a more socially acceptable version of their real true form, that's like, oh, there's that's that comes with trans vibes, like right? that comes with queer vibes, that comes with like trouble with self acceptance vibes, right? That doesn't seem to be how it's deployed here. Like it, it doesn't seem to be deployed in any way of, of like particularly thematically incorporating like it insofar as I'm reading it thematically here, it's more that during this particular episode, I don't know if we get to see the human disguise much more in the show. Um, it sort of represents Luna's desire to be normal, right? Like that she's a teenager who just kind of fucking wants to have friends and just wants to go to parties and wants to bang um, a big hot werewolf man, which, you know, normal teenager shit. Um, and like, so insofar as it has any kind of character design meaning, like this is sort of, this is her attempt to hang out and be normal with normal people rather than be a weird fucking hell demon with her freaky found, like her freaky hell demon family in hell. Um, sort of on the, th on the thematic level. And that's, so what, I, what I'd be looking out for is like whether the human disguise crops up again, like in mo at more times when Luna is trying to be noble, or when Luna is trying to build an identity outside of like, outside of Blitz's shadow and constant interference, or trying to be herself more, like that, that that's sort of representative of her desire to sort of, like, yeah, to just be a, get to be a teenager rather than be a demon, right? Which I wonder about that. I'd be looking out for, like, how that disguise gets deployed then. Because, like, any kind of disguise thing like this, like, much in the way of The Little Mermaid, right? Like, it, it, it's, it's shit that carries powerful, like, trans and queer vibes to it, to have that as, like, a thematic component. Um, so, yeah, I wonder if that's going to crop up. I'd be interested, I'd be excited to see it crop up. Oh, by the way, he has four fingers on each hand. I should check. I need to know. Do the regular humans in this world have five fingers? No, they have four fingers also. Okay. I That would have been fun, though. If, like, if, if, like, regular humans had five fingers. And then you could identify demons by only having three. Ah, but not, not so much, I guess. Impressive that they have been consistent, though, in keeping all of the human side characters having only four fingers. Um, I, that, that's the kind of thing I would imagine someone would screw up at some point. Um, <laughs> oh, girl. Anyway, yes. Having a good time. Thinking about many things. Considering many things. Curious about many things. Fucking Balto ass. <laughs> Off by and I see the song gets the most replays because of course it does. This is your final boarding call. Nice vibe on that song, by the way. Like, that has, that, that does have, like, summer beach jam vibes. Not so much summer fucking rager on the beach vibes, but, like, sort of blissed out, blissed out beach vibes. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I know 400,000 gay men who would fall for that, so. <laughs> Again, like, the background work is genuinely quite stellar on this episode, also, I've noticed. Like, like a lot of it is sort of, like, I don't really care that much for the for the hell aesthetic. Like, it, it does its job. It does what it's supposed to. Urban blight. Inner city misery. Like, gray, kind of miserable, concrete brick shit. And then we hit the human world, and the colors just pop the fuck off, right? And especially because, like, we are at the beach, it is nighttime, like, you get these gorgeously carved 
clouds and skyscapes. They're like, that's one thing of like, the comparison I've been drawing all the time is like Cartoon Network cartoons, right? Like the comparison I've been drawing all the time is, is so like old, super flat, but like the background design work that's going on here, I would compare more, more reasonably to something like Gravity Falls or Steven Universe or Owl House um, in terms of the level of, like just the sheer level of color play that's going on here and the compositions and like the ways that like the colors used as a as a narrative component of the episode is like that that's up there on that level I think genuinely very gorgeous and like Steven Universe is easy to think of because that also like a bunch of scenes that take place on a, in a town by the beach but fucking car Like, that fucking ocean, like, the way that the waves are carved as they sort of lap over the beach, like, those lines that are carved in the sand, the, like, those decorative lines, sort of giving structure to the to the flow of how the beach is put together. Like, some genuinely excellent background work happening on this episode. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, it's Christina V. <laughs> okay. I did not recognize her voice, but guys, that makes sense. James Monroe Hartman's Vortex. Just again, I just I just wanted to get to this part of the credits. Like all of my all of my compliments to the background people. Like Sam Miller and the whole backgrounds crew on this episode. Very like those fucking beach scenes, like that genuinely very, very pretty. Like some really just gorgeous artwork. Like I wouldn't mind I genuinely would not mind having some of like the background landscapes here, like the cloud scenes and the beach scenes. Like, if, if they were cleaned up of all the characters and shit, that, those could make for, like, compelling computer backgrounds. Like, that real fucking vaporwave vibes. I wouldn't mind that at all. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm trapped in, in sort of ADHD circular reverie here. Uh, I'm going to end the episode now, I think. I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying myself. Uh, bye.